Welcome to Dishing Up Nutrition. Today's show is brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. If you have been experiencing more anxiety over the past 20 months than you ever have in the past, well, just know that you're not alone. According to a new study, it was done by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, more United States adults are reporting having symptoms of both anxiety and depression during this COVID-19 pandemic. So currently, they state that about 42% of adults are reporting to struggle with anxiety and depression. So that's almost half of the adult population. So again, I just want to repeat, if if that is you, if you're one of those experiencing anxiety or depression, you're definitely not alone. Now, it's no news that we have been and are currently remaining to be in a very stressful time. So today on our show, we want to let you know what you can do personally to relieve some of that anxiety and depression. There's so many things out of our control these days, but there are some things that are in our control, and that is what we put into our mouths, what we're eating, what we're drinking. And some of you may be thinking, well, I could just take a medication and that will help my anxiety and depression. And I'm not saying, you know, stop your medication by any means. You'd want to work with a professional with that. But as nutritionists and dietitians at Nutritional Weight and Wellness, we know that so many improvements can be made for our moods through eating better. What does eating better mean? You might be wondering that. And how can that help to manage anxiety and depression? Well, those are the questions that we are going to address today. So I better introduce myself. Um, My name is Kara Carper. I'm a certified nutrition specialist. I'm also a licensed nutritionist. And I will be sharing some personal stories because I've experienced a lot of anxiety, especially before I joined the team at Nutritional Weight and Wellness. And after I started working here, I really started to make those connections um, about that whatever I was eating or drinking or not eating or drinking affected my anxiety. So I'll share more about that today. But I also want to, I, I would like to introduce my co-host, Carolyn Hudson. Carolyn is a registered and licensed dietitian. Now, Carolyn, first of all, it's great to see you. Yes, because I haven't seen you forever. The pandemic, <laughs> I feel like we're all kind of in our own little world. But Carolyn, you have made some exciting future plans. And although I'm sad for me and nutritional weight and wellness, I'm very excited for you. Would you just mind sharing with our listeners some of the changes you're going to be making in your life? Well, sure, Cara. Good morning. Good morning, Cara, and all of our listeners out there. Um, You know, I started my career as a dietitian way back in the 80s. I won't even give the specific (laughs) 80s, Um, but I've decided now at my age, it's time to retire and travel and start doing some different things. That is so exciting. Congratulations. It's exciting, but it's a little scary, too. You know, I've worked for a long, long time and I love my job. I love working at Nutritional Weight and Wellness. I love helping clients. So I'm going to really, really miss that part of it. So after November, I'm no, I'm not going to be seeing clients like in the office or even Zoom or any of those things anymore. Us for any of those individual nutrition counseling or therapies. However, if my travel schedule allows, and right now I don't have too many specific plans because of where we are with COVID again, um, I would love to teach some nutrition classes virtually or you know via Zoom when I'm in the Twin Cities. Um, and I would love to co-host dishing up nutrition uh, shows whenever I am free. But you know what? Nutrition is always going to be part of me because I just love making a difference in people's lives Mm -hmm. and their health. And, you know, it really helps them move to a different level, you know, when we help them 
Mm -hmm. eat better and Mm -hmm. improve some of their health conditions. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to miss you. Um, All I can speak on behalf of everyone, all of the staff at Nutritional Weight and Wellness and your clients. I know they're greatly going to miss you. Thank Um, you. But we're glad that you're still going to be around in some capacity. I will. (laughs) Well, I totally agree with you, Carolyn, that, I mean, it, it makes such a difference. And hopefully you'll be able to help friends and family and just anyone that you're interacting with, even if they're not a client. <laughs> so well, we understand that at some point in many people's lives, it is time to make changes for one re- reason or another. So it's been great, though, Carolyn, you know, listening to your expertise and your adventures as well. I know you you have you're a travel you like you have a travel bug. Yes, I should say. Absolutely. But especially as a dietitian in the remote villages of Canada. So I have a question for you. What is one thing that you learned while you were working in those remote villages in Canada? Some people may not know that about you. Yeah. Yeah. I was um, a, a dietitian, a regional dietitian for the entire province of Ontario And that made me go to some pretty remote places. Let me just say that. We'd have to fly in and either land on water or the ice or whatever. There were places that weren't roads. But anyway, that's a great question. You know, I learned that if the indigenous populations stuck to their traditional way of eating, they really maintained their health. They didn't count those fat grams or they were not really even concerned about the amount of fat that they ate. Um, they ate, they actually ate very high fat diets when they were eating in their traditional way and they didn't have cholesterol issues and very few of them were overweight. And what we're talking about today, anxiety, that didn't seem to be an issue with them either. However, the health problems came from the alcohol they drank, and I really have to emphasize, and from the high sugar or processed foods that were then available to them in their local grocery stores once their, you know, the various corporations or whatever destroyed their lands, you know, like from making hydroelectric dam projects and flooding their lands and things like that. So as dietitians and nutritionists, we know that those processed foods are affecting the health of many U.S. citizens today. Well, obviously not just U.S. citizens. This was in Canada. So it's I think it's all over the world, really. Any place where there are a lot of processed foods. Um, So... Um, it's interesting to learn about the foods that eventually did and do cause poor health in some of those remote villages. You know, as I just mentioned, years ago, these remote vi- villages um, started getting supplied with uh, kind of the same foods that are causing diabetes, cancer, heart disease, ob- obesity, autoimmune diseases, depression, and anxiety. Those foods are those processed foods. And I got to tell you, even when I was up in those locations, and for a while I was living in a very remote location, and we didn't get fresh vegetables. We didn't get fresh milk. When that came into the store, man, it was a run on the store. We thought we had a run on toilet paper last year. (laughs) Right, right. This was like, you know, a regular occurrence. Oh, my gosh, there's some fresh tomatoes in the in the store. It would like circulate in the community like wildfire and everybody would be down at the stores and it would be gone. That must have been difficult for you as well. I mean, living there and not having access to the the food that you were used to eating. Exactly. Fresh food. Yeah. Well, that is such an interesting story. So kind of to sum that up, it sounds like their traditional way of eating, which tended to be higher fat, not the processed high sugar, high carb foods, 
they were healthy. They were eating healthy, yeah. that traditional diet, and and then when the government was supplying the the more processed foods, um, and they didn't really have a, a selection anymore, right. Right. then the health d- started to deteriorate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, very very interesting. Well, again, if you or a family member are struggling with depression or anxiety, your food choices have a major impact. Now, I just realized that it is time for our first break. So we'll talk more about that when we come back. You're listening to Dishing Up Nutrition, brought to you by Nutritional Weight and Wellness. And my name is Kara Carper. I'm a certified nutrition specialist and a licensed nutritionist. I'm here today with Carolyn Hudson, a registered and licensed dietitian. And just to kind of recap, we're discussing what foods help reduce anxiety. I'm just going to give a couple examples. Animal protein, such as eggs, beef, salmon, chicken, turkey, bacon. Foods that tend to increase anxiety would be more of the processed foods that Carolyn was just referring to. Muffins, bread, pasta, cereal, pancakes, and of course, candy and treats. So we will discuss more about this right after break. Welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. Today, we recommend eating real food to reduce anxiety throughout this upcoming holiday season. And next month, we will show you how to cook some anxiety-reducing foods. On December 7th and December 9th, Marianne, she is our culinary nutrition educator, will show you how to cook simple sheet pan recipes and one pot meals. So it's really easy. Sign up for this class uh, to be educated and, of course, very entertained. Marianne's fantastic. Not just with one, but two cooking methods in one class. It's a great deal. It's only 25 bucks. And it's going to be taught in a Zoom format. So all you have to do is call 651-699-3438 or go to weightandwellness.com to save your space. It's going to be a fabulous class. Marianne is fabulous. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to be on a radio show with her last year. Oh, cool. Which is great. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we that interviewed one. interviewed her. But yeah, who wouldn't want to learn how to make sheet pan and one pot meals? And the nice thing about both of those is... You typically have leftovers. Uh-huh. I mean, unless you're serving to a large crowd. Uh-huh. No, I purposely but... make larger quantities. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's the way to do it is plan ahead. So before break, uh, we while well, we were talking, our topic today is anxiety. And 42% of the adult population currently experiences anxiety and or depression. And Carolyn and I just really want all of you listeners to know that food makes a difference. So that's what we're talking about. And I'd like to share a client's experience with food and anxiety and how how a certain meal affected her. So it was a client and she shared this story with me. She went to meet friends for dinner. It was at someone's house and they were playing games and had a had a good time. And what was served was pasta i believe it was spaghetti so there was some meat in there yeah and that can (laughs) that can be a problem not just with the meat side (laughs) right or the pasta too right 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 and the thing about spaghetti we can talk more about that but it's typically i mean a serving of pasta to keep our blood sugar stable and so it's not spiking and crashing is truly a little bit less than half of a cup cooked yeah, so picture that. <laughs> no, not right? very much. And That's people not usually fill you up. take two or three cups of cooked. We're talking mm-hmm. about 100 grams of carbohydrates breaking down into 25 teaspoons of sugar in the bloodstream. So spaghetti, you know, there's some bread with that, a side salad. So it doesn't sound like super unhealthy, but the point of what we're trying to make is it was just way too high in carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. And that tends to spike blood sugar. Um, So after the meal, it was time for dessert. So to top it off, uh, the host served strawberries with whipping cream. 
And the client thought, oh, you know, nutritional weight and wellness talks about whipping cream. And the kind that we talk about is making your own whipping cream where you take the heavy cream. Mm -hmm. You might put a little maple syrup for sweetener, maybe some vanilla extract, and you actually beat it yourself. Well, what she didn't know is this was kind of more of a fake Mm man-made whipping cream. I'm not sure if it was Cool Whip, but something like that. And she thought she was eating the dessert and thought, this doesn't taste like the real whipping cream that I make at home. But she continued to, you know, finish the dessert. Yeah, she's a guest. She's a guest. (laughs) Yep. Well, she started to experience really intense anxiety later that evening. Um, And it actually got so bad that, I mean, she had to actually go home. Oh, this is a true story. So, I mean, that one meal really affected her anxiety and so it was blood sugar and it was a chemicals? Com- it was a combination of just too many carbohydrates you have to think maybe um upwards of 100 and maybe 150 grams of carbohydrates we should be having that in one whole day, day. spread out right, right. not at one meal and then it was also she's very chemically sensitive and so the artificial ingredients in that fake man-made whipping cream um, also contributed, that was a contributing factor uh-huh. yeah. to the extreme anxiety that she felt. So we just want you to kind of think about this. You know, we'll talk more about the blood sugar piece. For me, that's really what creates anxiety is blood sugar spiking up too high and then crashing. It's that low uh-huh. that makes me feel really anxious. And for my client, it was a combination of that with the artificial ingredients. Mm-hmm. And we do have a lot of people that are more sensitive to chemicals than yeah. than many others. You know, they so, may not know, yeah. but perhaps it could even be a pumpkin spice latte that has some artificial ingredients. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That maybe that could create anxiety for a lot of folks. Yeah. So let's just rethink that, listeners. Mm-hmm. Rethink what you're having yeah. out there. You know, maybe you are one of those people that's chemically sensitive to those artificial ingredients. So frequently, anxiety and, of course, depression kind of go hand in hand, but they're really not the same. You know, anxiety is characterized by fear, apprehension, apprehension, um, nervous thoughts, and, you know, kind of extreme worry about the future. Uh, depression, on the other hand, involves kind of that sense of hopelessness. The life has gone bad and nothing can or will go right. And over 40 million adults are affected by anxiety, including panic attacks and obsessive compulsive disorder, social phobia, and just kind of that generalized anxiety uh, disorder. That's a lot of people, 40 million adults. So as dietitians and nutritionists, we look at many different biochemical reasons for anxiety and depression. But today we're really just going to focus on that anxiety piece. And it's really understandable that the rate of anxiety has uh, escalated. And we're going to talk more about that when we come back from our break. You're listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. Good digestion with a healthy intestinal lining is more important to managing anxiety than most people know. Clients who take two to three capsules of bifidobacteria before each meal, they report fewer sugar cravings, better digestion, and also less anxiety. So we will be right back after break. Welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. So here's a message I wanna share with everyone today. For many, many years, we were told It was all about calories in and calories out to lose weight. But we all know that public health message told uh, people to eat less and exercise more. But let me ask you, has that worked? Maybe for some of you it has, but apparently not for the vast majority of people Because since that message was first given so long ago, the rate of obesity has increased dramatically over the years. So at Nutritional Weight and Wellness, um, we follow the carbohydrate 
insulin model, right? And we believe that the current obesity epidemic is really due to the hormone insulin response to the changes in the food quality, you know, mainly high sugar and processed foods that have resulted in insulin resistance and weight gain. And of course, quantity has, you know, taken some of that too. those, uh, what do they call it? Supersize, supersize meals that everybody's getting, you know, that hasn't helped. And, but it's really more about that hormone insulin response. So recommend, we recommend, you know, focusing on what you eat rather than kind of how much you eat. It's much better strategy for weight loss and overall health and wellness. So it's the Mm -hmm. quality of the food. We need to be eating real food, right? Yeah, that's such a great point. And it is so much more. We've said this in past shows, but it's there's so much more than this whole calorie in, calorie out mm-hmm. misconception. Yeah. yeah so, right. so um, right before going to break, I just had started mentioning it's a supplement. It's called Bifido Balance. So it's a probiotic. It's Bifido bacteria. And Bifido Balance helps to break down food. It really helps to absorb the nutrients that we're eating. And also, this is relevant for the pandemic, it helps to fight off bad bugs, a variety. I mean, it's, it really can increase our immune system. Carolyn, I believe it's, is it 90% of our immune system is it's housed in our, in our gut? Right, right. So by supporting our gut with good bacteria, we really can fight off a lot of different viruses, bacteria, fungi, even parasites. So right now, there's a great deal on that Bifido Balance. It's You can get a 15% discount. Um, but actually, it, I believe the sale, <laughs> it's ending um, this weekend. So, But you can go online and you can still order that at weightandwellness.com. And um, our six office locations actually are open today if you mm-hmm. happen to live in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis area. So uh, check that out. The other really cool thing about ordering online you can have it delivered to I your know. house. I know. That is such a great option. I and that, that was that. available before the pandemic. Yeah. We right? were way ahead of the time. We're way ahead of the time <laughs> on that one. So, again, before we went to break, I was talking about the biochemical reasons for anxiety. So, and it's really understandable that the rate of anxiety has really escalated. Um, so, considering all of the changes that have occurred around the pandemic, you know, this is really pertinent right now. So as I said, anxiety is characterized by fear and apprehension. And over the past 20 months, day after day after day and night after night, what is the news blasting at us? Kind of doom and gloom. It's been really difficult. I mean, I've I've gotten to the point where I don't even listen to the news in the evening. I kind of catch up in the morning and then that's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it for me. I can't do it. <laughs> I I hear you. I'm I'm finding myself reading less news, watching less news and listening to less news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that social media thing, whew, I yeah. really have toned that way down. Right. I think we all have to have some boundaries with those things. So that we don't get caught up in the spiral of anxiety and depression. So, so Carolyn, that, I mean, that is such a great point. Um, I wanted to share just a quick story too about anxiety and, um, because we don't really talk about this too much today, but, um, personally, I have a really hard time with caffeine. Oh, that's a really good point. Oh, yeah. Share your story. Yeah. So when I used, this is like before I started at Nutritional Weight and Wellness, and I found myself driving in like an extreme state of kind of panic, shakiness, and anxiety. And I realized that whenever that was happening, it was directly related to drinking fully caffeinated coffee Mm. And not eating enough. So oh. maybe I had like some coffee with no breakfast. It got to the point where I would have to even pull over and couldn't even finish my drive. Oh, wow. 
Wow. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that because if anyone out there can, if that, yeah, so it's, can it's kind to of that. a double barreled thing with with coffee, right? Or caffeine. Yes. It's yes. Caffeine kind of gets you jittery anyway, but then caffeine also affects our blood sugar and how our blood sugar reacts, right? Yes, exactly. Because it does that spiking and then mm-hmm. crashing. Right. So. But some of you also might be wondering, what does food have to do with anxiety? And Carolyn and I want to share at least three biochemical reasons with you today. So the most common one that we talk about frequently on Dishing Up Nutrition is this blood sugar balance. So that's very related to my story about caffeinated coffee. But it is a fact that food, it will affect blood sugar balance. It's either going to affect our blood sugar positively or negatively. And some people, to keep their blood sugar stable, they really need to be eating frequently. And that looks different for everyone. But I've had some clients that feel best eating two to three hours, every two to three hours. Mm -hmm. So that looks like, you know, maybe three meals a day and maybe three snacks. Again, that's not for everyone. Right. But for those unstable blood sugars, some people need to eat six times a day to avoid the crash. Skipping meals and snacks can often create the blood sugar to be low and drop below the normal level. Think about it this way. The brain becomes starved of glucose, which is just another term for blood sugar. Low blood sugar leads to high anxiety. So I know for myself, if I skip a meal, my brain kind of goes into panic, fear and apprehension mode. And maybe if I am listening to the news and there's some gloom and doom, you know, I might feel more depressed and anxious than compared to if I had had a nice balanced meal or snack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I had protein, we really, really need that beneficial healthy fat to stabilize the blood sugar and some vegetable carbohydrates It's really interesting how the outlook changes. I could be listening to the same newscast and I may not go into that depression and anxiety Mm -hmm. place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we want you to think of the diet of, you know, the all of the teens, probably the majority of teens out there, what they've been eating. They often skip breakfast. So their blood sugar plummets and then they suddenly have some kind of fear about going to school. Or, you know, and a simple solution might be to make, you know, a smoothie or a protein shake uh, with, of course, some protein, some fruit carbohydrates, some coconut milk or cream. That would be your beneficial fat and a little bit of fruit. Again, that would be your your carbohydrate. Uh, Of course, we've got a bunch of recipes on our website at weightandwellness.com. So oftentimes teens don't want to be sitting down to a, you know, eggs, bacon and vegetables for breakfast, but they will drink something. They'll drink a protein shake, uh, call it a smoothie, whatever, (laughs) if mom or dad is going to make it Mm -hmm. for them. And that anxiety rate among teens, you know, really has skyrocketed. So we need some drastic efforts uh, to be made to get solid nutrition into their brains so that anxiety can be left behind. No more anxiety walking into that school. If you have a teen struggling with anxiety, Carolyn and I suggest making an appointment with one of our nutritionists or dietitians to develop an eating plan. The eating plan will be one that would help to balance their blood sugar because more often than not, that is the driving factor behind anxiety. And of course, we realize that changing a teen's eating habits is not always the easiest thing. But we find as counselors, you know, when we give the options, they're usually agreeable. And I hate to say it, but sometimes coming from someone that's not a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not mom or dad. Exactly. And we work with our clients, right? We don't say, oh, you have to eat broccoli or, you know, if they hate broccoli. We work with yeah. what they want to be eating and and what they're willing to change. Yeah, we don't just tell them and write out the plan right. for them. It's a very collaborative experience. Mm-hmm. It's a very personalized mm-hmm. experience. So another biochemical reason um, that sometimes we need to go 
to the next level, which would be to support the intestinal health. We already kind of touched on this a little bit with that bifidobacteria. So our intestinal health um, basically is about our microbiome. So what causes poor intestinal health? Actually, many things, you know, can destroy a healthy microbiome. And it all depends on what you're exposed to and what you put in your mouth. So we want to look at some possible reasons your gut might be off. Maybe you have been on several rounds of antibiotics or just even one round of antibiotics. Maybe it's for an infection or acne. Or maybe you drink two, three, well, I have clients that even drink four or more cans of soda a day. Or you sip on a diet soda, and maybe it's not a lot, but you sip on it throughout the entire day. And, of course, you're thinking that you're saving on calories, but here's a really interesting fact. French researchers followed 66,000 women since 1993, so that's a really long time, and they found that those who drank diet soda had actually doubled the risk for developing diabetes more than women who just drank regular soda. That's so interesting. That's a huge study. Yeah, and... People are astounded when we tell them that, that the diet is actually really, really bad for you. But neither are really very good. But the diet seems Mm -hmm. to really affect that microbiome. Right. I think that's so important because a lot of people might still think, oh, I'm switching to diet and that's better. But we're saying no. (laughs) (laughs) So you are listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. Now, next week is Thanksgiving, which officially kicks off the holiday season and parties, social events. So we really encourage you to continue to take care of that immune system, whether or not you've been vaccinated. So when we come back from break, we're going to talk about some lifestyle and nutritional recommendations that will help you get through the holidays and keep your immune system strong. Welcome back to Dishing Up Nutrition. If you're looking for a small practical gift this holiday season, maybe for your mom or dad, grandmother, grandfather, or anyone for that matter, I suggest a bottle of magnesium glycinate. It's great for those muscle cramps that come in the middle of the night, or maybe a bottle of key digestive enzymes for those on your list who have digestive problems. Maybe vitamin C, 1,000. Uh, That might be welcome for the upcoming, (laughs) well, current, I would say even, cold and flu season. Um, And the wellness whey protein, that's especially uh, great for everyone, uh, you know, athletes or really anyone. I use the wellness whey protein in my smoothie uh, pretty much every morning. So uh, all these products uh, can be found online at weightandwellness.com, all spelled out. Or stop by one of our six offices throughout the Twin Cities, and we can help you with um, any other suggestions. Mm -hmm. I have a few family members who I I purchase certain supplements for their Christmas gifts. (laughs) But they really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. They're expensive. Stock up. Yeah, (laughs) stock up. Yep. Okay. So Carolyn, before break, I just briefly started talking about how to care for your immune system, especially over the holidays. Mm -hmm. So important, right? Yeah. Especially if there's travel, maybe a little bit more stress, sleep can be off. So we want to give some lifestyle and nutritional recommendations to help get you through the holidays and keep your immune system strong. So the first one is Step away from the dessert table. (laughs) You know, that can really help to reduce or eliminate the the overall sugar and processed carbs Uh that we're, we're, I think we're getting enough without even going to the dessert table around this time of year. Absolutely. And then, you know, stay clear of the bar as far as if you're at a gap, a social gathering, just really kind of be moderate with that alcohol intake. Mm hmm. Focus on sleep and strive for eight hours, maybe eight to nine hours. That's really going to help to balance moods, reduce that stress and anxiety Mm -hmm. and be conscious of how much you're how much fluid you're drinking. Stay hydrated. 
You want to be getting eight to 10 glasses, eight ounce glasses of water every day. And supplement, Carolyn had mentioned vitamin C. So supplementing with 3,000 to 4,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day can help to boost that immune system. Mm -hmm. Another really important thing is maintaining a vitamin D level somewhere between 60 and 80. And here in Minnesota or any of these northern latitudes, um, that's going to require supplementation. And, you know, that could be like 125 micrograms or 5,000 international units I use daily. We've already talked a little bit about the microbiome. So adding in that probiotic like bifidobacteria to support good digestion and a good, healthy immune system. You could also support your immune system with zinc, one soft gel. Um, or some uh, vitamin A, or and some vitamin A, I should say, or two teaspoons of cod liver oil. That's, you know, grandma knew best about that cod liver oil. So, but lastly, really, you really need to indulge less and truly enjoy what you're eating, but, but have less, have mm-hmm. less of it, for sure. Yeah, I mean, just make those conscious decisions about, okay, I, you know, if you want to treat, have a, have a moderate treat. Mm -hmm. Don't overdo it and really have something you enjoy, not Mm -hmm. just because it's like served at the dessert table, for example. I I always tell my clients, make a plan, Mm -hmm. make a plan because you kind of know what's going to be served at that Thanksgiving meal. So Mm -hmm. think about that ahead of time and don't just walk in without, you know, any concept of what you, how are you going to manage that meal? Very, very wise advice. So what are some other reasons for having poor intestinal health, which is one biochemical thing that we've been talking about? That's a biochemical reason that can lead to anxiety is poor intestinal health. Maybe it's from living on a fast food, high sugar, more of a processed food diet. Perhaps you've been exposed to environmental chemicals. And this can come from food choices. Just an example is the BPA found in plastic food containers. It's been shown to generate hormonal imbalances in women and men. When we talk about hormones, men have hormones too. Men have hormones. And they can have hormone imbalances from the same things like BPA from plastics. That's just one of the many chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis. Those chemicals can negatively affect intestinal health. And you might be thinking, well, why is this important? When we have poor intestinal health, we're unable to break down and absorb nutrients coming from our food. Even if we're eating healthy, we may Mm -hmm. not be absorbing and breaking that down. Right, right. So we, it's possible to eat a good weight and wellness balanced food plan and still be nutrient deficient if we don't have that good intestinal health. Exactly. I think that's really uh, important. So we're talking about three biochemical reasons, right? So uh, the third biochemical connection to anxiety is all about the food we eat. So... When we have a healthy small intestinal tract, so that's our microbiome, and we have some, you know, balanced blood sugar, we, when we eat a piece of uh, protein, you know, like uh, fish or turkey or chicken or, or beef, that breaks down into a variety of nutrients, right? So from the meat or fish, our bodies are going to get B vitamins. And B vitamins are critical for nerve function, especially um, B12. So a lack of B12 can cause anxiety. Um, And if we have adequate bifidobacteria in our small intestinal tract, we can break down that meat or fish into amino acids. So proteins break down to amino acids. And that becomes our neurotransmitters. So again, our third biochemical connection to anxiety is getting enough protein, especially other nutrients like B12 to support our nerve function and that protein to make our neurotransmitters. Our clients who avoid meat and fish or most animal proteins 
often become very deficient in their building blocks for mm-hmm. those neurotransmitter production. And that's really important. So it sounds like what you just said is if we have good intestinal health and we have that good intestinal health can help with that B12 production, then when we eat our animal protein, it can properly break down into those building blocks that are, you know, the it's the provides the amino acids like tryptophan that will make our serotonin, right? That uh-huh. happy, calming, feel good chemical. Uh-huh. So we kind of need all the parts in place. Exactly. Exactly. It's not just one thing. So we've yeah. got those a bunch of biochemical things going on in our body. Yes. Right. So animal protein is key and so is good intestinal health. Yeah. And it looks like we are our it's already time to wrap up this show. Oh my goodness. You know, our goal at Nutritional Weight and Wellness is to help each and every person experience better health through eating real food. And it's a simple yet a powerful message. Eating real food is life changing. Thanksgiving is just around the corner and all of us at Nutritional Weight and Wellness want to give a big thank you to all of you listeners for joining us today and every week and every month. Happy Thanksgiving and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for listening to Dishing Up Nutrition. If you enjoy this podcast, please share your favorite episodes with a friend or leave a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or iHeartRadio. The content and opinions expressed are those of the hosts or presenters. They are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. Product statements have not been evaluated by the FDA.